So, uh, the wave, you know, it's a very, we, we even with strangers, I should say, or kind of strangers, it it could be a very delicate and a confusing thing that us humans have still not, uh, come to an exact science. Even the most social people struggle and the ones who struggle with it the most find a way so i had a i have an incident where past couple weeks i've been having a nice little wave back and forth with someone where every day i see them they wave at me with a smile i wave back at them with a smile i even have added a hey once in a while and they've even nervously added a hey none crazy playing it smooth but I have a tendency to kind of lose track of things to kind of not stay on the ball and I guess I haven't been waving back the past few times I've seen this person and uh today they actually came up to me and they're like hey did I do something and I'm like no. Why? They said, well, you haven't waved at me. And uh, I said, well, I'm not exactly a trendy guy. <sighs> Welcome to episode 136 of the Off and Beat Podcast, and I hate myself so much. Uh, in case you didn't get it, wave, trendy, following, wa- uh, okay. If you have to explain it, it's not good. I disagree with that notion, but you know what? Fuck it. You can sign a waiver. Uh, I should probably send out waivers for people that listen to this podcast. <laughs> like, hey, just so you know what you're getting into, you might want to kill yourself. Because the census podcast is not like a Six Flags roller coaster where a child, you know, dies because those uh by the way the the people that run the the these 19 year old kids that they have running roller coasters in charge of an operation that is in charge of nine anywhere between nine year old kids and 72 year olds to not die on this roller coaster is going 98 miles per hour Even with steel bolts and all this shit, like, yeah, it's still a shaky situation. Scream Machine and Ninja. Talk about a concussion. Will Smith, when he slaps you upside the fucking head. Okay, Clint. Um, But, you know, and when that incident happened recently where some kid, uh, basically, I think it was like a 12-year-old child, you know, he, uh, you know, he fell out of the roller coaster and as you expect, he died. Very sad situation. But it really gets you thinking. Think about every time you've gone to an amusement park or carnival. It's always it's always one of two people. It's always, like I said, the nineteen year old, fifteen year old kid if it's in the summer for a summer job. It's always those Type of kids that's in charge of making sure everything's double tacked and secured. And I don't know if you've ever been on a roller coaster. They don't really check that much. Or it is some 58-year-old lady that is half asleep. That's on melatonin. That has an IV machine hooked up to her. And she's definitely not hydrated. No in between. They would never have someone stable like me. Like, hey guys, we're going to have a good time. I'm going to make sure you're double tapped and strapped in, baby. But from the stories I hear back in the day, it used to be just a herd of fun. It used to be just a herd of young adults having a great time. Still not getting paid, but you get all the benefits, the free rides, the bring your friends. The, you know, uh, bring a hot dog and eat it while you're on it. You know, cool shit. 
But now, from what I hear, you get none of those benefits, which maybe is why it's more unsafe than ever. I don't know. Um, But yeah, I'm going to start needing waivers for this podcast. But yeah, uh, whew, it's been a, finally I'm caught up on the pods, uh, and, uh, I'm actually like, when I record one, it'll actually be posted, not storing them ahead of time, but anyways, keep them moving, uh, cause I'm in first class in my podcasting class, cause I'm a G L. A M, that means generous lymph ass movies. <laughs> oh Jesus! Whew, I need to get back into shape for the pod. See, it seems like I can never have it all right. When I'm in shape, when my body is great, my when my body's in shape, my pod is not. When I'm a fat, lazy, no good, hate myself. That's when the pods are amazing. I feel like I've lost a step mentally. When I've lost, when I've lost all the steps by stepping a lot, you know. Uh, it's supposed to, it's supposed to be when you're in the best shape of your life. Well, I wouldn't say that, but weight wise, I am. When you're in that. Everything else is supposed to work together. And everything else is working great except for this. Why is that? I know I've lost a step. I'll say the elephant in the room. Because it's irrelevant. Okay. Well, maybe I got it back now. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I've been... Uh, you know, I was actually going through my closet today, right? Cleaning out some things. No M&M. Don't get any fucking ideas. Um, talk, forget about the JBP, cause I got the jelly bean pod. <laughs> That's an inside joke that only me and Courtney get, because she forced a thing of jelly beans in a cup. Thanks. Now I have a cup of jelly beans just sitting in the vehicle. I'm getting hot and cold like KP. Chris stops poor Zingus. Equals Katy Perry. Because last Friday night. I uh. Yeah. So anyways. But yeah. It's been a. It's been a whirlwind. Of a time. What a time to be alive. You know. By the way also. I saw a thing where Ed Sheeran. Actually made a video. On YouTube. Surprised they have more views. Literally talking about this whole lawsuit thing. Where. Uh, essentially he's been. Everyone knows he's been. Ed Sheeran has been kind of getting sued for. Uh, basically. Some of his songs sounding. A lot like Marvin Gaye's music. A Marvin Gaye song. And some other artists are specific. Oh there's a TLC No Scrubs. That one is basically. I forgot which song it is but. Like, I, I remember when it was a thing, when the lawsuit stuff was going on. I'm like, well, what is all this shit's going on? And there's videos of playing this song and people breaking it down, like music experts and songwriting experts and all this shit. And they're like, yeah, this is pretty uh, copy and pasted. Now, it may not have been intentionally, but when you listen to it and they play side by side and this and that, they'll play 10 seconds this and play 10 seconds that sounds exactly the same. It's like, yeah. And then... But he won the case, essentially, where it's like, look, I don't know what you want us to do. 60,000 songs are being played today. There's only 12 chords you could possibly play. And obviously, there's so many variations. But at some point, stuff's going to start sounding the same, right? And I'm not saying, I don't think when he was writing whatever songs, I don't think he was sitting there like, hmm, I wonder if I can do a No Scrubs TLC version of a song and kind of just change the lyrics, kind of make my own and just do some cool little redheaded uh, rap and shit. 
Talk about red roof rapping. Red head. Okay. Um whew. and the red roof ends. I do love the shape of you. And it's even though apparently the red roof in based off a of Benzino interview on Vlad TV, even though it wasn't Vlad that was interviewing him, it was some guy going over the top. Uh, basically saying, well, everyone knows if you had a red roof in and you're a guy, it's kind of gay. His words, not mine. I'm like, that's a hell of an assumption. And I was thinking, I've stayed at a red roof in, so. I guess I am gay, even if the stuff I was doing in there I'll tell you otherwise. Because I was by myself um, with the lovely ladies. But that was my youth. Youth is a beautiful thing. And Red Roofson got to eat decent deals. And guess what? There's always vacancy. I don't have to worry about setting a reservation. I don't have to worry about... The scam of, by the way, with hotels, you know what's bullshit about hotels is that I, the whole check-in and check-out stuff is stupid. It's stupid, okay? First of all, it should be one day is 24 hours. Every hotel is the fucking same. Why do they all have the same thing? Why is all enter at 3 or 4 o'clock? You can't enter early, or you have to pay some fucking fee. I learned that the hard way. I had to pay a fee one time when I went to Myrtle Beach with my, uh, with my, well, no, it wasn't Myrtle Beach. It was fucking, uh, it was in Florida. But yeah, somewhere in Florida, what was it? Jesus Christ, Clint. What is the fucking main city in Florida? Not Daytona. Not Miami. Uh, Shit. Well, obviously, it wasn't that great of a time, and it wasn't, um, because I was by myself, um, most of it, and that was the moment I got engaged, good times, gotta love it, oh, oh, you gotta love it, okay, fun story for another pod, but anyways, I was there, we got there like 2 o'clock, because we took some bus shuttle, whatever the hell, oh, Universal Studios, Orlando, that's where we fucking were, Jesus Christ, um, even though we didn't end up going to Universal Studios because fucking cunts want to be pains in the asses. Imagine going to Orlando and not going to fucking Universal Studios. What the fuck is wrong with you? You know, and it was like, oh, it was supposed to be a big old occasion. The boy had everything set up. You know how many times I'll play Universal Studios and the N- Nintendo GameCube and some bitch wants to make it about her fucking self? Oh, I need to stop using that word. I really need to stop using those words. But you know what? When the shoe fits, the shoe fits. You ruined my surprise for you, bitch. Um, <laughs> I want to tell you Universal. Go to Jurassic Park. Well, the Jurassic ride. You do the little, ooh, cool, look at this. Even though I've never really seen Jurassic Park. Apparently the ones with Chris Pratt are, eh. Which, again, because it's like, I get it. Like I, I get the appeal of Jurassic Park is that, hey. Some people were like, I guess, not lost, but they go search for shit and like maybe dinosaurs still exist. And they go there and like Bermuda Triangle, you find out shit exists. Okay. And then they're like, hey, why are they chasing me? Huh? I've never seen the movie, so I'm probably really ignorant. But you know what? I don't give a fuck. It's a fucking movie about dinosaurs. It's not a real thing anymore. All right. Where's Ross when you need a paleontologist? Well, Jurassic Park's actual middleman. That's incorrect. Could you imagine if you were sitting there with a real life Ross or Russ? That's an inside joke. If you know, you know. Um, <laughs> and Russ seems like a dinosaur to see era. Automatic, supersonic, hypnotic. Get them checks. Um, <laughs> Uh, now we're potting. Getting back into it, you know. Gotta do a little. Gotta do a little. Uh, what is it called? Oh, fucking calisthenics for the warm up. You know, gotta do a little push ups. You gotta pull up as Sierra does when she's changing Russ's diaper, because uh, he is uh, shitting the bed. All right, with 
money. Um, <laughs> but look, I want. I just want a nice little trip. I just want a nice little thing. All right, want to go to Universal? I want to do a few little cool rides. Universal, they have a lot of cool shit. It's actually, in my opinion, I think it's better than Disney World. There, I said it. Even Disney World as a kid, I don't remember much. I saw the pictures, though. Eh, the cameras were not that great. Always want to live in the old times. And did you know that most, you want to talk about, like, Disney employees at these parks? People who've worked there, they said it's a very similar work environment as, like, Ellen. That type of shit is so toxic and so much pressure. All that, f- and they're getting paid, like, nowadays, probably eight or nine bucks, but at the time, like, five or six bucks, you know, back in the day. Imagine you're dressing up as a fucking princess and shit, and then in the back, they're just slapping you around. They're just like, hey, little teacup, how about you uh, stir the good old shut the fuck up juice and do your job? Um, Yeah. But yeah, look, I don't know, Jurassic Park, I've never been into it, I actually think, uh, fucking, what's that, that that other dinosaur real life visualization movie is actually kind of better, um, can't think of it, but, you know, whatever, the land before time, that's animation, um, but yeah, look, um, It was, uh, yeah, hotels. Anyways, back to the hotels. Where the hoes will always tell your actual wife. Um, <laughs> unless you, you know, pay them more. Pay them more, pay them more. Uh, there's a... But yeah, the whole, like... Check-in at 3. You gotta leave at 11 a.m. It's always the same. First of all, then I should just be charged for 16 hours. I think you should just be charged hourly. Like, if I check in at 3, but I don't, if I, if the, if I can come in at 3, but if I'm traveling from wherever the fuck, and I'm not going to be there till 8 o'clock at night, how about this? How about you charge me from 8 p.m. to whenever I decide to fucking leave and check out? Alright, the shit is not difficult. It's so unnecessary. Like, it makes no sense. And let's say, now that I think about it, that's actually not a great idea. Because then, you're going to be having weirdos renting rooms for like a couple hours to do extracurricular activities. And then you're going to open a can of worms there. So I guess, because it's like if you only need a room for like, I don't know. 15 minutes, um, you'd be charged accordingly, um, no, but let's say you were to rent a room for, like, two or three hours, because you just want to watch some TV, maybe you just want to, you know, play Scrabble, um, maybe you just want to get to know someone in a private environment, then you know what, 20 bucks, not a bad deal, but you don't want you know, if you're running a business, you know, fine, I get that. But why can't it also be, hey, actually, I want to check in at 9 a.m. And I want to leave at 9 a.m. the next day. I think if you promise and you make a commitment to a 24-hour stay, then let me check in wherever and I'll leave 24 hours later. Like, there should be different plans. Like, why is this so set in stone? Like, they don't have actual deals. I don't know. I think hotels are just a little outdated. I think hotels just have a they just need a they just need a little business mind. They just need a reamp. They they just need to think about some things. And I think I'm the guy. I think I should run a fucking hotel. What would I name a hotel? It would be like the uh 
the CNN, I called the CNN Center, Clint Nelson nude at all times. Okay, well, that took a turn. And uh, like Jeffrey Tubin. Okay, because nude is the we. And looking back at that story, that dude who literally, like, the idea of this man actually went on CNN. And he actually works for he actually works for the New Yorker. He's covered stories that actually have actual meaning in society, you know, like eternal affairs, like ironically workplace environments. And yet this guy kind of did something in a workplace environment, even though technically it was not he was not technically in a workplace, but you were in a Zoom that was about work and your penis took place. <laughs> Um, but the fact that this guy was like, oh, we got a 10 minute break. Cool. Actually, it wasn't even 10 minutes. It was like literally like a couple minute break in between or some shit. And this guy's like a couple minutes. I could get this done. But you could, you were in your house. You had so much other room where you could have got it done. Let's say in this hype, one, you could just turn off your computer, exit out the thing. Don't don't give me the whole like, oh, I didn't, I thought I was on mute. I thought I blocked the thing. It's like, but you know, there's a chance shit happens. Because you know, even if they're not watching, you know, the NSA is watching you. Hate to break it to you. They're watching you. All right. So someone's watching you anyways. But you don't want your co-workers watching you for their sake and your sake. That's awkward when you go back and see the office because this was during COVID and all that shit. So he probably wasn't really going back to the office anytime soon. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had Zoom meetings. But he was definitely like he was going to see them soon. And the fact that this guy had a minute or two and he's like, Oh, what can I do in a minute or two? Not like, hey, you know what? Let me go on my phone. Let me just do what most people do and just waste time. Not like, hey, you know what? Let me go downstairs and get something to eat. Or like most people, when you have these urges, you leave the area and go get a towel. All right? Go do something. Go get a hobby. This man's like, nah. Ooh, I like a man that lives on the edge. Well, um, should have lost his job, but it's cool. But the fact that this man went on scene and tried to say, like, yes, you know, mistakes happen, and, you know, and apparently he's covered articles about human behavior and toxicity from men. He's like, and, you know, I'll even acknowledge, like, you know, it's it's pretty ironic that I've covered stories, and then here I am doing, because, you know what, I even... And he even said it in such a way. It was like, you know, it even even goes to show that, you know, even I'm not perfect. It's like, well, trust me. No one thought you were anyways. Typically people that write the subject matter of articles you write, typically are not. They're typically finger-pointing type of people and dick-pointing type of people. Um, And honestly, if I was his wife, I would be more embarrassed about this then if there was actual tape of you having sex with another woman, I think this shit's more embarrassing. I, I know this is an old story, but I kind of, I was watching some, well, not the video, but I was watching a story about the video. And then I was watching him on scene and look, and this man has such like, Hey, it, this man made it like he was on the show and he has such like a calm demeanor. He has such a like presence. He has such like a, eh, like, and you would have thought like this man just like, you know, you know, the situation with this court case with Casey Anthony It's like, dude, you, it's like you're talking about yourself. He's talking with such like distance, like he's not like a this. It's not like he's talking about a story about a writer or a story writer, whatever the fuck for a magazine website. And this shit happened. He's talking about in third person, right? This is you. And this man's like, hey, you know what are you gonna do? It's like, 
You, you know what you could do? Not do. <laughs> you could just not do. Um, my theory is, I actually think, I always think when that shit happens, when people do weird stuff in those Zooms, when people do weird things in group conversations and group visualization, I think most people, I think most things that people do that are not deemed appropriate, I think most of them do it on purpose and they play it off in such a way. Um, I think he wanted people to see his penis. Like, I don't think most scandals, I don't think most, uh, like, sex tapes, honestly, when they're leaked, I don't believe most uh, weird shit that is leaked about someone's self is by accident. I think Anthony Weiner, come on, like, you, you really think this man... Like, you really think Anthony Weiner didn't want his Weiner exposed? I mean, look, he's in politics. Weiner's, Weiner was going to get exposed anyways. And he did, ironically. And I think, honestly, like, when you're born with a name, I think it matters. And I do think, literally, your name changes how you look. It changes how you operate as a person. And I think you kind of become... Literally what someone with that name typically becomes. Like, I honestly believe if my name was Jeff, I honestly think I would look like a different guy. Because I would have grew up living like a probably different type of life. Like, Jeff, 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 Jeff. God forbid I'm a douchebag with a Jeff with a G. Jesus Christ. Imagine a G. Jesus was spelled with a G. G G G um but honestly like really like if you're born with the name Wiener like I really just think you're going to be a very open-minded very curious guy I think it's like you know what let's just like your rationale is like look I know what everyone wants to see and everyone's like actually I don't and he's like yeah you do He's like, uh, yeah, could you not take a picture of your wiener with your child kind of in a 10 feet radius? That's kind of weird. Could you not? And I'm surprised he actually didn't get like child crimes, child like sex crime. Not that he did, but he took a picture of his shit, a very suggestive pic, while his child was like kind of. In the same room. It's like. Again. Like Tubin. You can just go to the bathroom. Like at least Tubin exposed it to adults. Even if they didn't ask for it. Or weren't expecting it. I, I, I only want to see the video. Of him doing it. Just to see how into it he was. Because I will be able to tell by how into it he was if he really meant to do it on purpose or not. If he's really into it, he knows what the hell he's doing. I think most people know what they're doing with this shit. And, like, if my name, if my name had any wiener in it, like, I wish I had a middle name. Fun fact, I don't. If I had a middle name and it was wiener, you guys would see it. I would probably put it as like the podcast logo. I would put it as like the podcast episode art. Call it art. Gotta love it when they call genitalia art. Genitalia art. I've always found that weird also with like baby commercials. Isn't it weird how like with babies and movies and commercials. I understand like commercials like in the sense of. Or like the Nirvana album cover. Like, I understand, um, like, you know, whether boy or girl, like, seeing the top of a bit, like, you know, a baby run around with a diaper on, and, you know, a girl, like, her chest is being exposed, but it's like a nine-month-year-old baby just walking around with, me, 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 look at me, (laughs) backyard again. Like, it doesn't bother me, it's like, yeah. 
I've always found it weird, though, like in movies, when they kind of unnecessarily kind of... Ex- I don't want to use the word exploit because it is a baby. But when when it's just like, hey, look, this is definitely a girl. It's like, yeah, I could tell when they named her Sally. I could tell when they named her Leslie. Um, and they'll, they'll just unnecessarily show like the whole nudity of a baby. It's weird how nudity of a baby in a movie is not like even considered like a parental guidance thing and it's not even considered like nudity but if you age that person seven years then it is like what's the draw like what's the drawing line for when it becomes inappropriate to show in any type of media because you can show a nude baby on social media and it's like it's not even a thing they even no one would even throw a qualm about it but if like a 22 year old girl or boy, especially a boy, if a guy, if a 22 year old guy just goes full frontal on Instagram or wherever YouTube, like you can show that you'd be banned. It would be deleted, whatever the fuck. But then when it's a baby, it's like, ah, show it a little wiener. It's like, eh, it's a, you know, it's just. Like, what if you can prove, you know, now I got theory. What if, let's say you're a grown man. Let's say you're 33, right? I don't know. Just throwing numbers out here. And let's say you can prove that you had the same exact size as when you were a four-month-old baby. Let's say you pull pictures, you send it to the website creator, you send it to the company, you're like, see? Here's my proof. So let me show it like I'm a baby. And they're still like, no. Could you take them to court and be like, hey, what's the difference between mine and some other person's? Some other baby that posts theirs. What if another baby posts and is bigger than mine? Why are you discriminating, huh? I wouldn't be surprised that happened. I just think uh, it just seems, baby, baby, where's my penis? Uh, <laughs> I've always, you know, I've always just kind of found that weird. Like, you wouldn't just post, you couldn't just go to Walmart and if you just buy some Spanx, is that right? I've always never understood the term of Spanx. It's really just, what is it, like compressed, under, under, like uh wraps it's not even like underwear it's like it's literally just like a uh i I consider like a like a tape vase for the lady body this just shows how much i don't know uh but when you buy diapers and shit it's just nude babies on a thing it's like a pedophile's dream it's a weird thing where that's okay But you can't, but even when you go into like a sex shop, even on the covers of things, even on DVDs, which you'd be surprised that some of these places still have it. I've been told I'm a child of God. I don't go to these places, blah, blah, blah. Or when you look at even the most like, holy fuck, is this a swing set? What the fuck do you need a swing set for? Eyes closed, just swanging my balls in your mouth. I've always found like you know, like the big old sex toys are like seven hundred bucks. It's like, yeah, I, I just came, I just came up here to buy some anal beads for like eight bucks. It's like, but why get that when you get this four hundred dollar fucking corset of a bassinet that can hang from any wall? It's like. You know, if I if if I if I just buy some anal beads in some anal gel and twenty two bucks, well yeah, stop trying to upsell me. You got a deal. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, 
talk about PPP loan, pocket, pussy, and pleasure. Optional. PPPO, RPO. <laughs> but yeah. You'd be surprised. Like, you know, these sex shops, man. And I haven't been to one ever. But if I have, it's been a very, very long time. Child of God here. Um, even if you go in there, they can't legally show nudity from a woman or man on a on a box <laughs> box on any of these DVDs. They got a blur and stuff like they got words and shit, but they can't actually show. The thing. And this is literally what these places are designed for. To give you visual representation of what you're about to use this shit for or see. But. Babies. Nah. Who cares. It's not developed enough. It's like. But that's when you're supposed to set the precedent. That hey. Hey. When they're undeveloped, don't fuck them. And I think that's where these creeps kind of get these weird ideas. Like, oh, like you're just if you, if if someone really like I don't, you know like I'm not very sympathetic towards child predators or anything like that. Um, and I know people will try to say like, oh, you know, there's some they can't control and stuff and all this, like, yeah, maybe not, but whatever, not going down that rabbit hole, but I feel like that's one less thing you could do to kind of get the spidey senses going for them, you don't want to, you don't want to give these people influence, these creeps, like, it's the weirdest thing when you hear these predator, like, these child predator, like, when it starts getting to that single-digit kid shit, like, I, I do feel like there are levels to this, like, a, like, a weird 40-year-old guy with a 15, 16-year-old girl, it's still disgusting, it's weird, it's beyond weird, and it's illegal. Most states, I don't know. Some states try to justify weird shit. But it's weird how certain things can be illegal in states, but then if you get approval from a parent, like what fucking parent? If a parent approves their 14 year old child being married to a 30 plus year old guy or person, but let's be honest, more times than not, it's guys. Um, that parent should. Honestly, child services, they should they should be thrown in jail anyways for even approve it. It should be like a setup. It should be like Chris Hansen's like, you know, they should have like Chris Hansen should run a sting operation for parents that approve their 14-year-old child getting married to a 35-year-old person. Like what what part of you is like, this is a great idea? You know what? I've raised my children right. They're ready for fucking marriage. But they should do like a whole Chris Hansen sting operation for the shit. Have it all set up and then they show up to the house and the guy just smacking pizza in his mouth. It's like, you're about to marry this 14-year-old girl. Where were you? He's like, the parent approved it. It's like, ah, shit. They did. Ah, we can't do nothing about it now. Oh, man. But that's, but that's kind of the thing is that Is that there? There is this weird lineage to believe that it is open ended. It's open minded, and this is the problem when you have too much of an open minded culture. Yeah, I think too much open mindedness is a little problematic. But again, back to the predators. When you start getting to that single digit, uh, I, I, I don't. I think that's beyond just hey, you have some weird beyond disgusting stuff about you i think that is more of a sinister it's all really sinister but a 15 16 year old compared to an eight year old is a little bit it is a whole lot different because it's not even 
develop like there's not even a development thing that you should be attracted to and that is beyond honestly i believe ones like that like you should i would be for execution like i would be for killing i know it sounds old oh, this liberal wants to kill people i'm not political in any means and i don't identify in anything I don't even know what I would be identified as. You know what? I don't believe in labels and I don't believe in being identified. So don't identify me. (laughs) Um, No, but I honestly think if you do anything with like a nine-year-old child or less, automatically, I think I would be okay with execution. And I know people are against the death penalty, but I feel like there's really no turn. There's no beneficial aspect to you being brought back into society because you have already damaged someone and fucked someone up. As a, and I feel like when it gets to a certain points, like there's no rehabilitation for people. There's more that that's more than just someone who lost their way. That's more than just someone who has some weird things about him. That is someone that's more of a choice, in my opinion. And they're using weird sicknesses to justify really disgusting choices. Um, again, this podcast is getting a little too intense lately. Um, uh, Jesus. I need to find the road back home to where this podcast begins. The origins. We always romanticize the past and the origin. We o- we always kind of... We always kind of, when we look into specific things in the past, we always try to remember the good times. We always try to... Rem- we always try to think something was a lot better than it was. That's why when you hear these old timies like, Oh, the past... When things were simpler, when people had manners, when men were men, and and woman, Cam Newton, my dishes, and shut the fuck up, <laughs> and just were absolute cunts. No, I actually I haven't listened to a thing about the Cam Newton thing, because I'm actually pretty sure people are making it some as not. I think he literally just said based off what I grasped from it without seeing the interview. And I hate when people say, oh, see, you didn't watch the whole hour and 40 minutes. You're right. I'm not going to sit here and listen to an hour and 40 minutes of much of anything, to be honest with you. I hate when people are like, oh, well, when you talk about something from like a live stream that someone did nine fucking hours or something. It's like, oh, well, see, you didn't listen to the nine hours for full context. Like, first of all, if you need nine hours for full context of something. That person really needs a better job at explaining shit. Just a thought. Um, but you're right. I'm not going to sit here and listen to full episodes to get one aspect out. I'm just not. But see, you didn't listen to we talked about this. You're absolutely right. I didn't. And if you want to go, well, then you shouldn't talk about whatever if you don't listen to everything about it. It's like, you know what? People cite things. People cite the Bible. And they've never even read the Bible. And they're out here making millions, okay? So I don't want to fucking hear it. And you buy the shit. So I don't want to fucking hear it, okay? But, um, shit, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, yeah. God damn it. I wish I could just, like, rewind. Oh, the Cam Newton shit. I'm actually pretty sure he just said something along the lines, which he's actually kind of hinted before and stuff he has said in different type of smaller, like, real-life interviews. Like, you can definitely tell he doesn't... And if you just look at his actual personal life and he has children with different women type of thing, you can definitely tell, like, kind of the life he kind of aspired. Not really aspired, but the life he kind of... Um, is okay of forming and fusing together in multiple aspects. But, personal choice of his, that's his, whatever. But, 
he basically just says, I, I kind of just want traditional woman. And traditional woman isn't always, again, and I know I said the past is always sometimes romanticized is better. Um, I think certain aspects of what things were back in the day obviously are not great in a lot of ways. And I don't even think I need to list when it comes to specific like woman roles and woman expectations society. Um, but also, people got to remember gender roles and woman typicals. I should say more stereotype of what view as a stereotype for woman roles. They existed for a reason. Um, and it was mostly for beneficial reasons. And to be fair, a lot of women actually kind of enjoyed it. It brought value. It made it. It was this ingrained thing. Like when you get into, and I'm not look. I'm not a expert in terms of uh, behavioral stuff. And women are this, and men are good at this. But traditionally, if you live long enough, you kind of pick up. What women are typically better at the men and vice versa. And women are essentially designed to nurture and to take care of things that typically require women. That made no fucking sense. For some reason, I thought I was saying the greatest fucking thing ever. <laughs> It sounded like a jacket. No, no. All right. Here's what I mean by that. Um, going to get in the Cam Newton situation without a job. Um, hey, don't worry, Cam. I can't throw either. Okay, that was a low blow. He, I actually like Cam. I actually think he deserves a shot. Um, but yeah, there's a... I think people are making this like gender roles things like it's bad. There's roles for a reason. When you marry someone, when men and women marry, you have to, you have to, it doesn't necessarily have to be defined day one, but you got to be able to fulfill what needs to be done. You got to figure out what needs to be done and you got to divide the labor per se and who does what so shit can get done. Okay, we have a plan to buy a house. How are we going to do that? Okay, you have a good paying job. I may do other stuff on the side to make a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But it's going to be on you to provide that for me, being the fact that now that you want to have kids, like, okay, so now I have now I have your children in my body. Okay, going to have to take time off of work. Then when the kid is born, I have to take care of them for a little while and stay home and... You got to be able to provide that. Yes, I got you. It's a division of labor to bring clarity and stability. That's the main thing about all this stuff. I, th I think I think what Cam is really just trying to say more the traditional aspect is that when you kind of look at the landscape, at least what is promoted on social media, at least what is promoted in algorithms and what gets attention and click, is that there's a lot of people out that will not take the most important aspects of a relationship or marriage or kids and, oh, have kids and all this shit, but then I'm not going to do the stuff necessary to set a good environment or to set good examples for that. And it's, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do, the, you know, the, you know, we, we can have an open mind to relate. It's like yes and no because at the end of the day, I I want to come home to some good food. All right, there a little misogyny on the pod. You know me. I'm a well mannered. I'm a I'm a very uh, not defined role type of guy. But you know what? You also got to have a good awareness of what you bring. Cam Newton has made a lot of fucking money. Very prestigious in his profession. But he's accomplished. He, and when you make that type of money, you know what? You can afford to say this shit. And I know people don't want to hear that. 
But for the right guy, I really, I think honestly for the right guy, just about any, any, I think most women actually want to be a traditional, quote unquote, whatever your definition of that. I really think most women actually want traditional situation. They want where. They they can have a career and stuff like they want to have the opportunity for that, but they also most women want to be taken care of because they want to have children. I think most women want to have children, and understand that you know what you have children stuff takes a step back for everyone involved, not just not just the husband, not for everyone things take a step back because. It's not about you anymore. And some... I think what he's kind of getting at is when you get there, is that some kind of just don't want to take that step back when they have children or when they get married. I understand that the shit's bigger than you. I know you got married to this individual, but when you marry an individual... And then you start expanding your family, getting things that acquire stuff. Ironically, it's not really about you anymore. You or the other person. That's why when people always just throw out the word, I want to build together with someone. Building together means you got to be able to bring something to build. It's not about money. It's like, okay, your role, you make the money. Okay, but I don't want to have kids, but he wants kids. Okay, then what are you bringing? I'm not saying, I'm not saying the women are just baby makers, like that's the whole purpose, but I mean, realistically, we're on this earth to continue this species that we have fucked up and mastered and fucked up on a daily basis, and that's the beauty of it, and fucked um, a lot. <laughs> Even all in the family. Oh, Archie, get in the bunker already. And I just, um, I, I know what people are going to take out of context about the situation. And I also wouldn't be surprised if he did say some very specific that, you know, woman or I don't think he said anything on woman or nothing. Like, I don't think he would say that, to be honest. I think even if he thinks that, I don't think he would be putting that all out there, being the fact that he still is a quarterback in the position he plays and he needs to be perceived a certain way. I think he knows that. So I don't think he would put all that out there. Like, I, even if he does believe, like, the most extreme, like, woman or servants type of mentality, which I don't think, obviously, I really don't think that's what he thinks. But I think just based off of knowing Cam and how he kind of operates, like, it's not really surprising that that's the type. He, and also, I, I think the main quote that he said is that... Uh, Women don't allow men to lead type of shit. And I think he used it. You know what? You know what the real thing that really triggered people? If he didn't use the word quote unquote bad bitches. Then I think that's where people will find ways to make. Even if you don't like the term bitches, right? To ever refer to a woman. Even if it's used as a complimentary term within women find that interesting Um, if you don't want something to use towards you don't use it and then it doesn't open the pass to have people outside use it but okay but no like even if you're someone but the thing is is people will focus on the fact that oh it's not that he said but he didn't have to use that term he didn't have to use that type of uh, verbiage because it sets a negative connotation for everything. It's like, okay, fine, but it doesn't change what he's saying. 
it's still the same thing. But you want to focus on that to distract the fact that he's probably spitting a lot of quote unquote facts. Ah, Jesus. Um, at least his truth of facts, which is a consensus between a lot of people, more people than not, I would say. And the thing is, is a it's this whole, I want my cake and eat it too type of, I want this, but, you know, I don't want to understand what comes with it. And I think that's the biggest thing. Is a lot of people with a lot of different things, not just this, is a lot of people want things, but don't want to deal with what possibly comes with it. They want to act like, I have this, this, and this. It's like, yeah, you know what, you can, you can, uh sit here and finance $20,000 of furniture on a credit card. You absolutely can. Um, But you know what's probably going to come with it? You're probably going to miss payments. You're probably going to go in debt. That's probably what's going to come with it. Um, There's stuff that comes with things. There's, There's... Un, there's um, ignorant attachment avoidant type of shit. And I think that's more of the point. Is like, if you want to do that shit, cool. But just understand that when you want to start talking about the traditional shit, people aren't going to look at you as such. And I'll even be fair in this sense in that I believe a lot of reason why this type of circulation, this type of trendy behavior, you know, a wave goodbye um, to the pod. Um, I think a lot of the reason why a lot of this, this thing is very prevalent precedent is not because of, you know, feminist movements or nothing like that. I honestly think it's because the trust and a single individual male to be able to provide in today's society is very unrealistic. Um, I think it's less and less than ever because you need not just more than a general skill set or education. You got to really find a specific thing, spend your life on it, and you might be able to make some of it. I think there's more opportunities to make money and shit like that. But I think there's a difference between making money and being a self-made man. And I think the way... And I know I'm kind of speaking all over the place right now. Just trying to get through it. Um, But I I do believe just the trust in a man... From a woman's point of view in today's world. Based off a lot of things. And ironically. I know we're talking about gender roles being this bad thing. But yet they will use. Except gender roles will also be used against us. If we don't fulfill. Whatever their view of gender roles is. Ironically. They don't. You know there are people out here. Men and women. I don't even want to make this about women or men. But we'll just say both. Because it honestly applies. But there are people that. Will. Say it's unfair that gender roles have to be automatically applied to them. But then they will use gender roles to automatically denote or get rid of possible options for future prospects. For who they would want to be with. Or they will use gender roles to make judgments and generalizations of people. To make it easier on themselves to judge people. But they don't want that same judgment on them. And I think that's where the shit gets kind of annoying. It's like. And gender roles, if gender roles automatically have this terrible assumption, when, like I said before, it's really just a division of labor. It's just like, hey, this is what you provide. This is what we identified, kind of like the reason why I chose you and the reason why we work together well is because we do these different things that complement each other. And so we, men and women, are naturally more times than not. There's going to be very similar across the board of what men provide to a family and women provide to a family. That's why single fathers and single women 
in single mother, I should say, single father and single mother households typically. Like that that's why it's so hard because you know you're not gonna be able to give some that child everything that a decent human of the other gender would have been able to. But you just make the best of what you can. Um I don't know. It, it it honestly as time and I'm not I'm not out here trying to defend, you know, because I haven't really seen the clip, but based off what I've picked up and shit from different reaction stuff that I've watched and stuff and people are just putting these blanket statements on pro football talking of Cam News says sex and then they pulled up when he made a sexist comment to a reporter in twenty eighteen when he was with the Panthers when he said, you know, it's funny hearing a woman talk about route tree. And you gotta admit it's kinda funny. Not because women don't know route trees and stuff like route trees is a pretty simple thing actually. He picked a bad example to go after where most reporters kind of know what a route tree, but it's, I think what he did shed light that still is a thing, whether you want to hear it or not, is that there are athletes who don't view female reporters as um, the most qualified. And I'm not saying that's why I believe, but I think what he did expose in that 2018 situation was, it's like, yeah, this is a real barometer of how men in sports really kind of think of women still. Now, it's progressed a lot, but there are also a lot of very good female reporters. I can name a few off the top of my head. NFL, uh, Tiffany Blackman, I think she's really well. Uh, uh, and that's where it ends. No, no, there are there are actually a fair, Aditi Kikabala. I kind of like her. Um, there's plenty of actual really good female reporters. Mary Kay Cabot, she's really good. Where they actually do a good combination of storytelling, actually getting in the grains of what's being taught, of what actually the news and information they're trying to get to the fans, and it's a good balance in that. But It's just one of those things that's ingrained. And I honestly think that the loss of faith in, you know, decent guys over time and genuine guys because the society we've created, I think, has played a factor in why there's this heavy movement of why there's this heavy back and forth manosphere shit online is because there's a lack of faith in men. And that's fair in a lot of ways because men aren't like men of the days. But you know what? Men of the 1990s weren't men of the 1970s. Men of 1970s weren't the men of the 1940s. And guess what? All those men from the 40s, when they got older, 70, 80, and they see 20, 30-year-old men, they look at them like pieces of shit nobodies that don't know shit. And that cycle always continues. And that's the thing about evolution. We always think that the next generation is softer. And in some ways it may, but they also may not be in other ways. Because there's also more, you also got to be understanding on the next generation. There's always more on their plate just by default because we just make more shit. We become more innovative. We actually... There's more opportunities to do this and this. And sometimes there's so many fucking options that it's like, holy fuck. So also be mindful of that. Um, paralysis by analysis type of thing. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll just end it there. Shit, I forgot to say, suck some titties. Forgot to do it at the beginning of the pod, guys. But yeah, follow the podcast on all apps. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, follow, and most importantly, suck some titties. And that was episode 136 of the Off and Beat Podcast. If you need a little discrimination, I got you. I can, I can, uh, I can make your 
discrimination pop. I can make your sexism pop. So yeah, alright guys. Have a great day whenever this is posted. This is a throwaway episode like all of mine are. Yeah. Alright guys, have a great day.